action. This is stupid. I'm writing a letter to my feelings, a letter to the embodiment of my emotions, to my reaction to my own frustrations. It's a good job that some nut on YouTube can give me worldly wisdom or I could lose my mind. I'm writing to a person that does not exist, to an address that does not exist. I'm only half sure I exist at this point. I seem to be spending my days just staring at the screen mindlessly distracted from what I should be doing. I've fallen down a rabbit hole of useless self-help talks. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to talk about the five healthy habits to avoid negative thoughts. Inane motivational speeches. Transcend. I use that word up to 14 times a day. I have transcended and so can you and quick fix snake o paddlers. So I've just had my latest health delivery as well as topping up on my usual essentials like my post-workout recovery shake and my new booster sachets. Remember guys, this stuff helps with abdominal aortic aneurysms, acid reflux, acute flaccid paralysis, AIDS. In the end, I don't know whether it was because I didn't have to waste my money on curls or because it was something I could do without having to use my laptop. One video stuck with me. I find it best not to stress. Everything will be okay and there are a thousand things you can do to help you feel better. I'm here to guide you through a few today. It's a ridiculous concept, being told that not only will everything be okay, war, genocide, world famine, disease, but also there are a thousand things to numb me to the feeling that I'm mindless, jobless and worthless. One thing I find helps is to write a letter to your emotions. Picture your anger and your sadness and tell it exactly how you feel. Personify it so you can see it and beat it. Writing just eight letters all but killed my depression. It's a ludicrous idea, I know, but fuck it. Worst case, it uses up some spare paper and gives me something to do for 10 minutes. So emotions, 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 emotions. Do you know what? I'm fucking angry. I'm angry at being locked inside. I'm angry at the fact the job I have worked my ass off to get lasted over five minutes. I'm angry at feeling so useless. I'm tired and pissed off and I don't know what to do. I have no reason for feeling such fatigue. I'm tired of being angry and I'm angry at being tired and I'm lost, alone with no direction. So this is my love letter to rage. Anger, my old friend, I have no time for you even with all the time in the world.
This is not going to work. I don't even see how this is going to help. Do I feel any coma? <laughs> nope. Why am I doing this? I'm writing to my feelings at an address I've conjured up from the time. A box of chocolates and a condiment. In fact, I've already gone to the effort of buying a book of stamps and posted the first letter. Have I lost my mind? Yes. Look what I'm doing now. I'm writing a follow-up. A sequel. <laughs> what a waste of my time. And that's saying a lot when you consider what I have been spending my days doing this past month. Well, I guess I'll sign off now. Don't want to miss the last post. Might watch that new comedy on Netflix later. Tell that for now. Dear Ivan, I hope I have your name correct. I struggled a little to decipher your signature. I hope you don't feel I'm overstepping things, as I believe your letters were not meant for me. I'm very happy to forward the two letters on if you provide a more detailed address. They somehow found their way to my home in Pepper Street without a postcode. I couldn't help but notice the frustration that was behind your writing. These are tough times for us all and I am sorry you have been struggling. Again, I do not want to interfere, but would be more than happy to help if I can. Hope to hear back from you. Yours sincerely, John Woods. John, please accept my deepest apologies. I didn't realize my inane ramblings would be read by anyone. If I'm being completely honest, I was hoping the post office would just burn them. I'm now trying my absolute best to remember what useless drivel I was written and how much I need to say sorry for. I do remember, however, dropping an F-bomb. Very sorry about that. If I have learned anything from this cock-up, it's that writing to your own feelings was a daft thing to attempt and has left me feeling even worse proves you shouldn't trust everything you see on the internet. You're a very kind person to have even bothered to respond to my outburst. Yes, I'm struggling at the moment, but then so is everyone and I must deal with this myself. Thank you again for your kind words. Regards, 
Ivan. P.S. How did you find where to write to me? Dear Ivan, you really have nothing to apologise for. You were not to know that your letters would reach a destination, but to be honest, I'm glad they did land on my doorstep. I would very much like to help you in any way I can. Please don't think it's all one-sided, as I myself am struggling with all of these restrictions and have been somewhat incapacitated these past few months with various ailments. I feel of little use to anyone, so if I could offer any wisdom or advice to a fellow human being, it would make me feel a lot more useful. I've spent many years of my working life talking to and supporting young people through my role as deputy head of a school, and you may find a problem shared is a problem halved. Please don't feel obliged to respond to this letter, but I would be very happy to hear from you again and perhaps gain an understanding of the issues you have been facing. Yours sincerely, John Woods. To John, what a lovely letter to receive today. Trust me, it makes a change from the most of the posts I get. You sound like a really decent person, so okay, I will take you up on your offer. My question is, how do I get myself out of this rut I am in? I came to the UK from my home in Bulgaria three months ago to take on my dream job as a technical operator in a music recording studio. Barely four weeks after starting the job, Covid struck and I was laid off and the studio has subsequently closed down. All my savings had gone into getting my own software, travelling across from Bulgaria and the deposit and rent on the flat I am in. I haven't had any chance to meet people, I can't find a suitable job and life stuck in this tiny flat is becoming monotonous. Dear Ivan, very sorry to hear your news. It is so distressing to see such a huge number of people losing their jobs, and your field of work has been struck particularly badly. You mentioned you have come over from Bulgaria. I presume that is where your family home is. Is there any way your parents could help you? Perhaps I could give you some advice. If the flat is getting you down, try to ensure you get out each day for a decent walk in the fresh air. The first day I followed your advice and went for a walk. I didn't realise where it would lead me. I ended up four miles from my house before I even checked where I was. But it was a great idea and I had the best sleep I've had in weeks. I'm going to try and make this part of my daily routine so thank you. As for the family home, that's sadly a no-go. I lost both my parents last year. I nursed them both in their final days. It was tough, but I didn't want them going into a nursing home and it was the least I could do for them to make them both comfortable. You sound like a young man and to lose both your parents is a terrible tragedy. You have my sincere condolences. I do understand how isolated you must feel. How can you make new acquaintances with all these social restrictions? I'm delighted you have started taking walks. Four miles is quite an achievement. Perhaps you could take the time to smile and greet people as you pass them. 
You would be surprised how many people appreciate a hello on their walk. You might be the first person who has spoken to them that day. Who knows, you could start up some friendships with regular co-hikers. You're becoming my social guru, John. I've now moved on from hellos and good mornings and into the exciting world of small talk. Usually it's just about their dogs or the weather, but it's just nice to be able to talk to people again. I look forward to a time when we could meet up so I could take you for a well-earned beer. We British love discussing the weather, as you will by now have discovered. Incidentally, your English is excellent in your letters. I presume you were taught it as a second language? With regards to the beer, I'm more of a whiskey man, but it sounds a lovely idea. We could sit in a pub garden and enjoy the sunshine. By the way, try to make sure you are keeping your curtains opened and your flat aired to brighten your day. Your advice on opening my curtains led to me completely spring cleaning my flat. I hadn't realized how much rubbish was in there. Felt good afterwards. I grabbed some cleaning products from work. You have a job now? That's a great piece of news. I guess it's not the job you hoped for, but at least you are back on the payroll. Actually, it's really not that great. I'm up on the stupid o'clock train to go and clean offices. It's mundane, lonely, but it helps pay my rent. And there's a lady I see at the train station whom I have been able to practice my smiling and greeting skills with. Oh, you have my sympathies. Some people love cleaning, although it's never been a passion of mine. Smiling at a young lady at a train station, eh? I hope this becomes more than just a brief encounter. Very clever, John. Nice film reference there. That's great to hear that your son was able to visit you. Must have been lovely to see your family at last. Did you both get a chance to get out for a walk? Hi John, just checking you're alright. I hope this comes across okay, only I haven't heard back from you to my last two letters and it's unusual not to have received one of your letters. If you've got a lot on, don't worry about writing, but would you mind just sending me a quick text to let me know all is well with you? My number is 07 Train's running late this morning, I'm afraid. Oh, you're joking. I've run most of the way here. Yeah, you've got time for a coffee. It's 25 minutes late. <sighs> May well do that. Cheers. See you in a bit. Platform 2 for the South Connect direct service to Merivale. Calling at Merivale only.
Northern, Northern Rail Service to Hillview is delayed by 25 minutes. This is due to a tree blocking the line in the Highfield area. Customers for Brownsea are advised to take the 842 direct train, leaving from Platform 1. The 842 Northern Rail service to Hillview is delayed by 19 minutes. This is due to signalling problems in the Brownsea area. We apologise for the delay to the service. Hello, is it, uh, is it Ivan? Uh, yeah, sorry, have we met? Oh, well, actually, no, but I, I believe you've been in uh, contact with uh, a mutual acquaintance. Uh, my good friend, John Woods. John, yeah, we've been writing to each other. Is everything okay? Do you mind if I say it? Sure, thanks. I had the pleasure of working alongside John for many years. You could probably tell by his letters what a kind, thoughtful and generous man he was. A great man. Was. Oh no, has something happened? I haven't heard from him for a week or two and was a little concerned. I know. John's son sends his apologies for not getting back to you and asked me to come and meet you today. I'm afraid to say that John passed away two weeks ago. Uh, he was very peaceful. at cancer. He'd been battling it for the best part of a year. And I can tell you that uh, your letters meant a great deal to him. It made him feel like the cancer wasn't rendering him completely useless. John spent his life helping people, and your letters and his responses became an integral part of his life. His son passed on your mobile number to me, and he mentioned that you were always at the train station at this time of day. Yes, my, my train is delayed. And he also said to give you this as well. What is this? It's a letter John wrote, and he was too ill to send, and he asked his son to post it, but he's been a bit preoccupied recently. Of course, I understand. I'll uh, leave you to read this. Um, I hope you might get in touch with me um, sometime soon. Um, you have my number. I do? Uh, yes, on the phone. Well, I had to check it was you. Oh. Uh, my name's Jeff, by the way. Dear Ivan, I'm so glad you're feeling better with all the walks. I do hope you carry on and it keeps you feeling well. Yes, it was lovely to see my son. I'm so lucky to have my family around me. I've been giving our correspondence a lot of consideration and I believe I can help you with your current job issues. I know someone who owns a recording studio. He was the music teacher at my school for many years and became a trusted friend. I told him all about you and the situation you were in and asked if he had any work for you. He said he does have a vacancy for a cable runner. I know it's not the dream job or even close, but it gets you back doing what you love and I really hope it leads you much further than that. Please do get in touch with him. He's a smashing chap. His name is Jeff.